there is a man known as the Sorcerer who, after months of preparation, is finally able to put his plan into action to kill Spider-Man. He sends out psychic waves across the country and finds Spider-Man on a rooftop, surveying criminals, and the Sorcerer invades our hero's mind. His powers cause pain and weakness for Spidey, who crashes into a wall and falls through a skylight, helpless at the feet of three criminals. We're reading Every Spider-Man Ever, and this is Marvel Super Heroes Issue 14, The Reprehensible Riddle of the Sorcerer. Even in pain and dizzy from the psychic onslaught, Spider-Man is still able to stand up against these crooks. He webs their guns away, dodges attacks, and pulls his punches so that he doesn't kill them. And, fortunately for him, that's enough for them to flee right into the arms of the police. If they'd fought for a moment longer, Spider-Man wasn't sure he'd be able to hold out. As our hero is left wondering what happened and hoping to get home to bed, we learn the backstory of the Sorcerer. He was just a regular man with psychic abilities, but he was weak and untrained, and so he sought out mystic mentors from all around the world to hone his abilities. And now, he's ready, and with the help of the Psycho Intensifier that amplifies his psychic power, he can put his consciousness in the body of someone who will destroy Spider-Man. To prove this point, he does something completely different. He pokes a replica of Spider-Man and gives Peter Parker a painful headache hundreds of miles away. The sorcerer then packages up the Spider-Man doll with a pin in the head and posts it to Spider-Man, care of the US Postal Service, expecting police to open it in the future and discover who defeated Spider-Man. The next morning, Peter Parker is still feeling unwell due to the psychic pin in his brain. He calls the doctor, who can't find anything wrong with him, but prescribes some medicine just in case. And that package that the sorcerer sent arrives at the post office. As Peter tries to rest, the sorcerer connects to his psycho intensifier and takes control of Spider-Man. Peter, unable to resist these unseen instructions, walks out into the street and gets in a taxi, much to Harry's surprise, who thinks that his roommate must be sleepwalking. Peter then spends his savings on a flight to New Orleans and takes a taxi to a hotel when he gets there, and he has no idea why. With Peter in his hotel room, the sorcerer finally relinquishes control to not overtax himself, and his package is being inspected by the police and written off as a practical joke that they should just return to sender. In New Orleans, for some reason, and unable to rest due to a parade, Peter puts on his Spider-Man costume and heads outside to investigate. However, as soon as he's outside, he's controlled once more and finds himself unconsciously walking towards a warehouse. Inside the warehouse is a crate, and inside that crate is a synthetic man. When Spider-Man tries to punch this new enemy, the man's body is rubber and his fist stretches through to the other side. On a second attack, Spider-Man finds the man's body to be rock solid and he almost breaks his hand in the process. He also learns, after firing some web, that the man's headband can fire a laser. Spider-Man has no idea why he's here and he has no idea how to beat this brute and he's still feeling dizzy from that psychic attack. He's able to dodge certain attacks, but anything he returns is useless, and eventually he gets hit hard enough and then thrown out into the parade outside. The sorcerer's plan has come to fruition, except that the sorcerer sent the Spider-Man doll that was assumed to be a prank and then returned back to him, and the postman, returning it back to him, rings the doorbell, unaware that the noise of the bell is at just the right frequency that it messes with the psycho intensifier and it kills the sorcerer. He just dies because of the doorbell. And without anybody controlling him, the synthetic man stops trying to kill Spider-Man and just walks off into the sea. And Spider-Man has no idea what just happened. Thanks for watching and joining me on this journey. Next week, Gwen Stacy is kidnapped. But before we get to that issue, here's a fun fact about this one. This Spider-Man story was originally intended for Amazing Spider-Man at a time when John Romita, who was the usual artist on Spider-Man, had injured his wrist and Ross Andrews stepped in to create this fill-in story. However, John recovered in time and so it wasn't used in Amazing Spider-Man, but they wanted to publish it somewhere, so they published it here in Marvel Superheroes issue 14.